Hello, it is Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well and welcome to another reading vlog. My favourite things to film. And in this vlog, I am going to be reading books that look like my favourite books. I've definitely seen other people do this before, I think. It's in no way a scientific uh, video and it's in no way me saying I think I'm going to like these books because they look like books, because that doesn't make any sense but it is fun and I love like book covers. Looking at book covers and there is something in, I guess, like the marketing of a book. Okay, let's talk about the three books that look like my favorite books. So it all started actually with, this is a book that I love that is one of my favorite books, Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud. I read this book last year. I've raved about it so much this year. I think it's incredible. Um, It's basically like a family, a family drama set in Trinidad looking at love in different forms. I love this book basically. And I saw a book and I was like, that looks like that book. And it was Welcome to Lagos by Chibundu Anuzo. And in the photo, it was like on its spine. And I was like, ooh, that's really giving me vibes. Um, So it's that sort of like sunsetty, like pink sky gradient. I don't know, it just reminded me of it. And then I think the front a little less so, um, but the back definitely this sort of like sky and then landscape. To me, they look very, very similar. So like I say, I had heard of this book before and I was interested in it. This is set in, obviously in Nigeria, in Lagos, and you're following five runaways who are trying to escape um, and they're all on this bus together. I imagine it's around the time of some some sort of political turbulence in Nigeria. And yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to reading this. So the next one, the book that I absolutely love is The Witch Elm by Tana French. You know, you know I love Tana French. I must get through one video that mentioning her. This is her first standalone. Absolutely loved it. It was my favorite book of the year. I love this book. And as you can see, it's like a white cover with like a black tree. And I think this really reminds me of White is Witching by Helen Oyemi, like a very, plain cover that's just like white with a black tree and also witch witch elm but i think they very much give me the same vibe again this has been on my tbr um i've read two helen oyemis and haven't loved either of them and i'm desperate to because i feel like i could love one and i really think this might be the one this is basically about it's kind of about like a house and a family in Dover, as far as I know. Um, and this family have lived there for a long time and the house is like a character and the house gets particularly attached to the women of the family. And I think we follow one girl um, as she potentially tries to like leave. So I'm really interested in that. Okay, so finally, I think this is pretty good. So I really love the author Kate Atkinson and I love, I love so many of her books. I love the Jackson Brody series. They're probably my favorite, but I also really love Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. I read this, last year for the first time and I think it is truly like a really excellent book. I was so drawn into it. It's about basically this woman who every time she dies she's just sort of like not dead anymore and I had to take a different decision if that makes sense. But anyway this is the cover of Life After Life. I feel like it's quite iconic. Is this the same fox? Hmm? I think it might be you know. Obviously I think these two look alike for the obvious reason of the fact that there's a fox on that one. And there's a fox on that one. I actually love foxes. This is Happiness by Amniata Forta. I'd heard of this book because Simon from Savage Reads loves it. And I do think we have quite a similar taste. This is an interesting sounding book. It's basically about two strangers collide, which is always a kind of book that I really like. You're following Attila, who's a psychiatrist, and Jean, who's studying foxes, urban foxes. And then Attila's nephew i think goes missing so gene starts to help him so this sounds really interesting i am extremely excited to read all of these books this week it's lunchtime on a friday now and i finished work and i'm going into town to get my nails done I'm very excited so yeah that's what i'm gonna do and then i'm gonna come back and do some reading it's absolutely chucking it down and my warm coat doesn't have a hood and my hooded coat isn't warm so i'm wearing two coats oh it is horrible outside so windy and rainy but i got my nails done they are extremely obnoxious like you can't really see in this light after show tomorrow they're like bright silver glittery and i love them so yeah it's friday night now very happy that it's the weekend and i'm gonna start i've decided with white is for witching just because i'm in kind of a spooky mood 
um, like I say, horrible outside and just cozy and it matches my outfit. So I'm gonna do some reading now. Hello, uh, it's now actually Sunday. On Friday night, I read the first 50 pages of White is for Witching by Helen Oyemi and really enjoying it. So you're following um, a family, Luke, and then his two children who are twins, Miranda and Elliot. And they live in this kind of B&B in Dover that belonged to the children's mother who died. Kind of get the perspective from Ellie, you get the perspective from Miranda, and then you get the perspective of the house. So already it has that kind of like magical element to it. And I guess feels a bit nefarious. I'm only in the first 50 pages, but Miranda has a kind of eating disorder called pica where she eats things that aren't food. Um, and she'd been in a clinic and she's come back out. Um, the narrative style is quite like non-linear and abstract. It's quite beautifully written, feels dark-ish, but yeah, I'm just really, really loving it. Like I feel quite like swept away by the writing. Also, as I've said a million times, love reading about twins. That sort of like exploration of that dynamic. Um, and it's really interesting looking at Miranda and Elliot. And yeah, I'm just thoroughly enjoying. So I'm gonna keep reading this afternoon. Hello, um, I've made a sandwich. It's like delicious sourdough bread from the deli and then all the leftovers from yesterday's dinner that we made um i don't know how i'm gonna eat it I'm not gonna lie to you also now halfway through white is for witching by helen oyemi and i'm still really really enjoying it when i read gingerbread i'll link the vlog where i did below i said i just wasn't sure like what the meaning behind it was or like what ideas the book was trying to explore that was being like done through all that magical realism and surrealism Whereas I feel like I have a better hold on like the themes of this novel. So as I said, B&B is in Dover and there's a lot about kind of immigration and the idea of Dover being, you know, the key to England and the place where refugees first come into the country. And there's a lot of different things at play around the idea of refugees. And yeah, it's just, it's working for me. I don't know, I'm really intrigued. I'm loving the writing, the history of their family, or at least the female side of it. That you kind of learn about through the house not really sure like how the novel's going to wrap up or where it's even really going to go in the difficult second half of the book but very interested to see and to keep reading today is just like the sundayest sunday ever but fresh bedding i finished white is for itching it's upside down and I really enjoyed it. It's definitely my favourite Helen Oyemi that I've read by far and kind of what I wanted from the other two books. It is very surreal, um, very like open-ended. I can't pretend that I understand it all or like piece together everything in a narrative, but I'm not sure that's necessarily the point. Um, and I don't mind kind of open-ended books anyway. I think like the atmosphere was brilliant. Um, yeah, like the tone of the novel, this really kind of dark, oppressive, claustrophobic sense um, was so strong and I really enjoyed that. I love those kind of books where there's just like undertones of darkness and weird kind of awful things hinted at. I definitely feel like, as I'd mentioned before, the themes that I latched onto the most were definitely around, I guess, like immigration, I guess the kind of collective British feeling amongst kind of racists and nationalists about purity and like being insular and that was kind of also played out I think in the eating parts of it of yeah that kind of like need for control and I thought all that was really interesting and I'm glad that I did finally find a Helen Oyemi that was for me I would love I think I'm gonna go and like read some reviews of this now just because I would just be really interested I guess to see like how other people read and interpret this novel because I think it's kind of like rife for that but yeah very happy wow oh my god look how big that rainbow is that's so cool haven't eaten my advent calendar in like a couple of days. Ew, not mine. Door ripped off, disgusting. This one's mine. Good morning. Um, I got this mug as a gift and I am fully obsessed with it. It's from Anthropology and it's my Anthropology mug. I know, right? Mm. I have like three books on the go at the minute, which is extremely unlike me. I never really like to read multiple books at the same time unless it's like a non-fiction and a fiction. However, currently 
Halfway Through Castles from Cobwebs by J.A. Mensa because I'm interviewing the author for a work thing and I kind of need to get this finished like ASAP. Also reading The Lying Life of Adults by Elna Ferrente because doing this for a book club with me, Hannah, Kieran, Jalen and CJ on Wednesday night. So I also, I'm about to be found, I'm over halfway through this one and I'm over halfway through Castles from Cobwebs. But despite all that, the vlog continues. And so today I'm also going to start Happiness by Amietta Fauna, who I called Amietta Forta the other day. Apologies for that. Um, yeah, this is just what I'm in the mood for next. I'm really hoping as well that when I start reading this, I'm going to like speak into existence seeing a fox because I live in like, I always call it a village. It's like an urban village. Um, and there's so many foxes and they're like super tame, probably really bad ecologically, but like maybe this book will tell me, but yeah, they just don't care about being near humans. Me and one, I actually think have a personal bond because one time he crossed over the metro tracks at night, just came and stood by me. So that'd be pretty cool if I saw a fox in the vlog, but unlikely, but yeah, this is what I'm gonna read today. I went for my walk earlier because it's now absolutely chucking it down and it's freezing in my house. Is that better with the light on? Um, so I've read the first 50 pages of Happiness and I'm very intrigued by it. So set in London um, and so far we've kind of been introduced to these two main characters who were mentioned on the blurb. So Jean is an American woman living in London and doing a study into urban foxes. And yeah, I'd say intriguing's the word. It's like quite a random topic, quite um, detailed prose about tracking dogs. Um, not something I've read about before, but I'm not not liking it. And then we have Attila, who is a Ghanaian psychiatrist. Interesting as well, because Castles from Cobwebs, which I finished this morning, was also partly set in Ghana. Anyway, the book in general so far has felt kind of like slow and deliberate, quite detailed, quite concerned with the in environment in like the literal sense and like what's happening rather than like inner lives so i am usually someone who just like loves kind of introspective characters but i'm hoping we'll kind of like get more of these characters and yeah it just feels a bit unlike something i've read before and enjoying it gluten morgue so i did a bit more reading of happiness last night but i also had to finish off the Lying Life of Adults, so not loads more, but still very much enjoying it. I'm so excited today because these heinous armchairs and that one over there are finally leaving my house. They're getting picked up tomorrow morning to be recycled and I can't wait because I'm sick of the sight of them. No offence to the kind family member who gave me them when I had nothing else to sit on. I mean, I don't know how I'm going to get them out of the flat since I nearly ended my family line getting them into the flat, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, so yeah, just having my breakfast, having a little coffee, can do some work. I'm now like 175 pages into happiness. It's like 300 pages, but the writing's pretty small. Uh, so it's actually like quite a slow read, quite slow plot wise as well, I would say, but I love a slow book. So some of the action started a little bit more, basically one of Attila's relatives, a young boy went missing and Jean kind of helps him with that using her knowledge of foxes, but also they tap into this kind of immigrant largely community um, of people who work night jobs and who are kind of ticking under the surface of these of I guess like life in London working for theatres and hotels and working these sort of slightly more menial jobs um, and I really think the book's doing a lot of interesting things around sort of that experience um, of being an immigrant obviously both Jean and Attila aren't English um, and this sort of like sense of community and the whole book I think is really looking at like a sense of interconnectedness and again is doing like interesting things with form where something in the narrative will happen and it kind of like swoops and and brings in another bit of the narrative or another character and there's this, this idea of like coincidence or like things happening symbiotically maybe I don't know I'm interested to see where it kind of goes in the latter half I'm also really enjoying hearing more about Attila um, and especially his job. So as I said, he's a psychiatrist um, and he's like a 
trauma psychiatrist who's worked in war-torn places or places where there's been kind of horrific things happened and looking at people's reaction to it so yeah there's just it's just a a really interesting book like I say haven't read anything like it before um and it's not the quickest to get through but I'm very absorbed it's now 8 p.m I have a glass of wine I have my laptop and I have the Lang Life of Adults because it's time for the book hotties book club I'm very excited about it say hi everyone <laughs> Hello, lads. Hey. Let's had our little book club. It was so fun. We talked about the book. Sorry, why do I always have the shiniest betwixt the brows? Um, yeah, it was really fun. It's also just crazy to me that, like, in May, when I've been furloughed, and I'm like, yeah, let's start a booktube channel, that I would end up in December with, like, four people that I genuinely think of as my friends and, like, talk to every day and can, like, sit on a video call with. And, like, two of them live in America. One of them lives even further away. He lives in Wales. Like, it's just funny, isn't it? But very positive and nice. Good morning. Uh, I'm coming to you from what now feels like a very empty dining room. Uh, I didn't realise how much room those armchairs were taking up and now I'm like I want to buy more furniture <laughs> and I can't afford to. Anyway yeah they got out. It wasn't easy. I'll insert a little clip at where we thought we'd reach an impasse but me and Alex didn't break up so all good in the hood. Um, I also finished reading Happiness. It's a really interesting book. I'd say it's a very like thoughtful book. It's interesting because I wouldn't say it was like plotless, but it definitely doesn't have a very like distinct narrative arc. There's not, it's not really like a beginning, middle, end story. I think it's really like a character study about these two people. And I also think it has a lot to say about kind of community, nature, the way humans interact with nature, but also the way humans interact with each other. So yeah, I think I marked it as a four on Goodreads. It would be like somewhere between a three and a four because I think it's really really well written and i like really admire what it did technically and i think it's an interesting book but for me it didn't have like a massive emotional impact i would say but yeah it was really interesting and still love foxes still haven't seen one it's um actually my last day at work today before christmas i have three weeks off at christmas which is crazy especially as i can't do anything but i'm gonna go do some work now and i'll come back to you when i'm free a free bird okay so it's lunchtime on friday and i just logged off work until the 5th of January. It's the 11th of December today, which is just very exciting. I don't know what I'm going to do with all my free time, but very exciting. Um, Larry's here because I just showed him on a work meeting, as you do. I'm going to start reading the final book for this vlog, Welcome to Lagos. I'm reading this one because it looks like Love After Love. And I actually read Love After Love in December last year, and I posted an Instagram photo of this yesterday next to the Christmas tree, and then I realised it was really similar I'll put a picture up to the picture that I posted of Love After Love last year with my Christmas tree in. Just thought that was interesting. So yeah, gonna do some reading. I'm like, hey, what's up? Hello. So I'm 100 pages into Welcome to Lagos. It's about 350 pages, I think. It's a very fast read. It's very fast paced. Yeah, we're getting like a range of different perspectives of people living in Nigeria, but the main group we're following is a man called Chike and he was a soldier. He was becoming like increasingly uncomfortable with what he was being asked to do. And basically he absconds with another man. And then they kind of travel to Lagos together and pick up a few more waifs and strays on the way. I'm enjoying it, definitely. Like I say, fast paced. I don't usually love like a road trip story. There are a lot of characters as I'd said. That's not my favorite thing. I usually prefer like a kind of a closer look on fewer characters but there's still like a lot of the book left to go I'm definitely interested in like the political situation that is kind of coming out about nigeria i've read a lot of nigerian fiction this year certainly in comparison to previous years we've all been kind of looking at like different time periods in nigeria and i think it's really interesting to be kind of like building up that knowledge of political history throughout recent years so yeah Keen to keep going. Just realised I haven't opened my advent calendar in days. So Alex got me, I don't know if I've mentioned this, like an ASOS beauty advent calendar. So I thought I'd show you what I've been getting in day six. <gasps> oh, it's one of those face roller things. These are just those things where I'm like, you must be completely pointless. Yet, I love it. Oh, day seven is living proof. Perfect hair day, five in one styling treatment. Hmm, not sure this is going to be for me as I have the flattest, limpest, straightest hair ever. I don't really like have a nice wave that you can tussle. I love the word tussle. I wish I did, but I might pass this on. 
Ooh, Origins. I like Origins. This is an active charcoal mask to clear pores. Mm, yeah, that's satisfying. Get those pores clean. Day nine. Ah, this works. Love to sleep pillow spray. I've never used this before. Ooh, I've actually been sleeping. Well, I was sleeping really terribly recently. And then I realised it was because I was going to sleep at like half eight every night because I'm so bored of lockdown. Now I've started forcing myself to wait up till 11. I am sleeping better, but hmm. Ooh, day 10. Ooh, I love Nip and Fab. Ooh, it's a tonic. I love this kind of thing because I never, I really like skincare and I love beauty, but I never know like what to buy myself. And then today, number 11. Ooh, it's toothpaste in like a really cool little vintage thing. Handy for travel, not that we can travel. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to show you that. Mm, I look so flaky today. Cheers to it being the Christmas holidays. I'm now like 200 and something pages into Welcome to Lagos, like over halfway. And I cannot make up my mind about this book. Once we got past the road trippy nuss of it and kind of settled in, I started to really, really love it. And it was giving me kind of half of a yellow sun vibes not just because it's nigeria but because it was this group of people kind of thrown together and living in difficult circumstances um and we started to like delve into some of the characters more and i really like that but then the plot has just picked back up again and some of it is really good like really good plot intrigue and nicely tying things together things i didn't expect but it's just going too fast so something happened in the last kind of 20, 30 pages that felt like it should be a really big thing and kind of was a big thing. And it was maybe given like two lines and I just can't keep up, I guess. I can keep up, but I just don't feel like we're getting enough time to like reflect on things that are happening, which is what I like. Um, And a lot of the plot is kind of a bit more ridiculous. I guess in that way, it's not really like Half of Yellow Sun in that it's serious, but it's treated with a kind of more of like a rompy vibe, I would say. So yeah, we'll see. We will see. Now I'm gonna watch a Christmas film, I think, because it's Christmas. Um, and I wanna watch something like really shit rather than like a good Christmas film. So let's see what Netflix has to offer. Operation Christmas Drop, you say? Featuring Bonnie from The Vampire Diaries. I'm in. So far we've got Overworked Woman and Hunky Soldier with a cute niece, obviously, so. For some reason, the two characters immediately hate each other. I mean, I know the reason. It's so they can have flirty bands under the guise of sniping at each other. I'm mesmerized by the worst CGI gecko I've ever seen in my life. Loki, this film might be like a scathing look at capitalism and Western ideals. Oh no, no. Literally two seconds later, revealed itself to be a film about a Pacific Island that's paradise, but in abject poverty and oh, they need our help. I genuinely didn't watch this film to hate on it. Like I love cheesy shit Christmas films, but this is like some white savior nonsense. Also, it's not funny or romantic or Christmassy. Not good. Good morning. Yes, you can. My friend texted me asking if she can borrow a book because I'm about to go on a walk with her. The answer is yes. So I finished Welcome to Lagos last night um, and I kind of changed my mind on it again. <laughs> It's been a roller coaster. I feel like I kind of like these books exactly the same. Like they're both like a 3.5, like a seven out of 10, um, but they're very, very different. So this book did slow down a little bit in the second half, or at least it's a bit more serious, I guess. Um, and we did get a bit more from the characters. That was like my favorite bit of, sorry. I think that is Chibundu Anuzo, cause I've met her before. And this little like drawing looks a lot like her anyway. Yeah, my favourite bits were when we really like delved into the characters and you definitely got more of that at the end. It is a really like fast paced book, but I thought it was really, really well written. And I liked all the stuff about Nigerian politics. It was probably like a little bit still too fast for me and I would have liked even more from the characters, but I did really enjoy it. So I thought I'd finish this vlog by being like, so does this book that looks like this book seem like this book? Not that it matters. So is this book like Love After Love? Well no but there's definitely elements of like a found family in both i'd say settings are evoked really vibrantly in both and i would say actually there's an element of moving to a new place or finding yourself in a new situation and and like the struggle of that is happiness like life after life no 
not really at all, apart from they're both quite London-centric books. And interestingly, I think they both kind of look at the idea of like the cause and effect of your actions, maybe. I guess Life After Life, like I said, is like kind of a bit of a sliding, not sliding doors, but like how the decisions you make impact things and you really see like the different paths that character could take. And in this, I do think, as I've said, this book's quite interesting in like causality and like the relationship between different things and how one small thing can kind of like affect the wider landscape maybe. And then is White is Switching like the Witch Elm? Well, no, but they are both set in, I'd say like big houses and look at like family secrets. So really, they're not, not the same, but I really enjoyed making this vlog. I did enjoy all of those books. I think it was fun. And I hope that you enjoyed it too. Let me know if you've read any of these books or what you think about them. Thanks again for watching. Obviously I'd love if you subscribe to my Instagram, my Goodreads are linked down below and I will see you in my next one. Bye.